All right, let's do this. Deadpool and Wolverine is officially the highest grossing R-rated movie of all time. Come again, this time in my ears. Deadpool and Wolverine. Oh my God, he's gonna say it. Has now become. Oh my God, he's gonna say it. The highest grossing R-rated movie of all time. Suck it, Fox. I'm going to Disneyland. Deadpool and Wolverine has just overtaken Joker as the top grossing rated R movie of all time. What does that mean in the murky waters of cinema and the broader culture war? Let's break it down, shall we? From a conservative perspective, here's the silver lining. This film's success, it's a middle finger to the woke mafia. It's raw, it's unfiltered, and it's making bank. This, my friends, is the market speaking. People are tired of being told what to think, what to laugh at, what's acceptable humor. Deadpool and Wolverine says, we're not here to be politically correct. We're here to entertain, and entertain it does. Sure, the film may lack in plot and depth, but it's not pretending to be the Brothers Karamazov. It's pure popcorn munching, pugilism promoting, fanboy pandering fun, and it doesn't pretend to be anything else. But let's not be naive. There's a flip side and it's not all roses. The film's success could be seen as a step backward in terms of cultural refinement. We're talking about a movie where violence is not just a plot device, it's a spectacle. From a more conservative viewpoint, this might be where some start questioning the normalization of violence, the glorification of anti-heroes, and the impact on our youth. These are not your daddy's superheroes. The good side of this good and evil dialectic leave much to be desired in terms of role model behavior. However, in the end, it is the truest form of heroism that saves the day, self-sacrifice. Maybe the overarching message of Deadpool and Wolverine is at its core the very basis of evangelical Christianity. Bad messengers can deliver the good message. But let's touch on the humor. Deadpool and Wolverine dives into some controversial waters with the humor. While some might argue it's pushing boundaries, others, especially from a conservative lens, might see it as regressive. The culture writ large seems to have lost ground against what our parents would have considered vulgar, crude, even vile language. Maybe it's a lost cause, as even based right-wing culture warriors in our space blurt out profanity after profanity, all in the name of fighting the culture war. We all have our lines in the sand. As a conservative Christian, I don't use profanity, but it doesn't bother me to listen to. Some, it might. Some join in. Whether Deadpool Wolvie crosses that line for you is up to you, but it isn't something I would consider a win for the red pill cause myself. So what does this mean for our side of the cultural divide? Deadpool and Wolverine's success is a testament to the power of free speech in cinema, a victory for those who believe in the market's ability to dictate content. But it also poses a question, at what cost? Are we trading cultural depth for shock value? From my perspective, this film's record-breaking status might be seen as both a celebration of artistic freedom, a love letter to the real fans who've been begging to be heard, and a cautionary tale about the direction of our cultural compass. So there you have it, Deadpool and Wolverine, a cultural conundrum wrapped in a box office smash. What's your take? Is this the future of cinema, or are we witnessing the decline of our cultural standards even on the right? Drop your thoughts below, and remember, in the battle for our culture, every ticket sold is a vote. Until next time, know what you believe, why you believe it, and then act like it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Your comments below help the algorithm know that you want more content like this.